Hey everyone, welcome back. We are going to jump into community health nursing theories. Welcome to CASRN, where I teach you about all things nursing. First off, I want to go over what we're going to talk about in the video. We're going to talk about theories and what they are. We're going to talk about some elements of nursing practice, what stakeholders are, and then we'll jump into the actual community health nursing theories. So first off, a theory is a supposition or a system of ideas intended to explain something, especially when based on general principle independent of the thing to be explained or a set of principles in which the practice of an activity is based. So I know that's some really scientific jargon, but basically what we're saying is that we're trying to show how people act or what they do. So we're going to create this theory with different steps that are going to help guide us how to accomplish a specific outcome or to explain something of how it happens. When it comes to nursing inside these theories, we, our goal really here is to promote healthy living and we wanna prevent health problems, we wanna treat disorders, and then we're going to rehab people as much as we can. Then of course, it's always important to evaluate and research inside those theories to make sure that they're working the way that they're supposed to. The roles that are important inside theories are going to be the provider, an educator, an advocate, a manager, a collaborator, a leader, and a researcher. These are all people who are going to help create a theory or they're going to take part in implementing that theory. Stakeholders are really important, especially when it comes to public health and public health nursing. Stakeholders are the people that are going to be affected or have an interest in the outcome. So these are gonna be the provider, the nurse, the aides, the patient, and the family and the friends. If you're looking at it on a community level, these are gonna be the neighborhoods and the businesses that are going to be affected by the change that's going to happen. So there's lots and lots of ways to look at stakeholders, but just remember that these are the people that are gonna be affected by the outcome or they're gonna have an interest in that outcome. Now the theories that we're going to go through are Nightingale's theory of the environment, the health belief model, Orem's self-care model, Newman's healthcare systems model, the King's theory of goal attainment, Pender's health promotion model, Roy's adaption model, and Salmon's construction for public health nursing. So I know that this is a lot, bear with me. I know that this is like not the exciting part of being a nurse, but there is an important element of understanding behavior because behavior is going to affect health right so if we can get people to stop smoking then they're less likely to have lots of inflammation and cancer if we can get people to stop drinking and driving then we're going to have less car accidents if we can affect these people to create positive body changes by eating a healthy diet and exercising then they're going to have a better quality of life and and potentially avoid any significant negative health outcomes, right? There's no way to predict that for sure, but we definitely know that there are certain behaviors that are going to promote health and there are other behaviors that are going to decrease health. So first off, of course, we have Nightingale, Florence Nightingale, you know, she's the person that we love when it comes to nursing. She really did a lot for creating nursing into what it is. So the idea here, I love this quote from Florence Nightingale, is that we're going to put the patient in the best condition for nature to act upon him. So we are going to do our absolute best to create a healthy environment. So Nightingale's theory here is that we, the healthier the environment, the more improved that the physical health is going to be, which is true when you think about it. So we're going to create that best environment for our patients. Then the concept here is that we want to have like good ventilation and a, and a comfortable temperature. We want to control our noise level. If you think about sitting inside a hospital room, hospitals are very, very noisy and it's very easy to agitate people when they already don't feel good. We want to control that noise level in order to promote healing. We want to keep it clean, both the patient, so a person and the environment, right? Because we know that cleanliness is going to help reduce the bacteria and the microbes that are in the area. We want to have lots of light we want to have good and healthy food. We want to make sure that the bed and bedding is clean and tidy. And then of course we want to provide that emotional comfort by talking to our patients and giving them hope and advice. 
Then the health belief model is an explanation of health behaviors based on attitudes and beliefs of the patient. So the idea here is that the patient's perception of the behavior or the behavior change is going to affect how they actually address that change. So this is the patient's perception of the susceptibility to the disease, how severe that disease would be if they got it, the benefits to making the change and any barriers that they might see in order to be able to make those changes. And then the cues to actions are events or people or things that cause an individual to change that behavior. So for example, if somebody has a heart attack, they're probably gonna look at changing their diet or if they have some sort of illness or death or a car accident, whatever it is, they're gonna be some cue to action to make them say, oh man, maybe I should do that. Uh, for example, recently, my husband has been losing a lot of weight because he has type two diabetes and he actually is to the point now where he has no longer has type two diabetes. And that's been encouraging for other people in our life that also have type two diabetes that they're like, hey, how did you do that? I wanna do that too so that I can stop taking my medicine. So that's another cue to action. We watch this positive effect that's happened to somebody else. And then we wanna go ahead and say, oh man, maybe I should be doing that too in order to have a better life for myself. And then all of this is done because we want to help promote self-efficacy. So this is how someone feels about their ability to be successful with that change. So our goal then as nurses is to discuss with patients and be like, hey, you know, tell me what you think about this. Tell me if you feel like you're susceptible to it, how severe you think it's going to be if you do get it, and then any benefits and barriers that you might see from actually making that change. Next up, we've got Orem's self-care model, and this is encouraging self-reliance. So there's three parts inside this self-care model. It's the theory of self-care, the theory of self-care deficit, and the theory of the nursing system. So first off with this theory of self-care, these are activities that are initiated by the person to maintain health and life and general well-being. So the ability to perform these self-care activities are directly related to a person's ability to perform their ADLs. And ADLs are activities of daily living. So this is going to include the ability to take in food, water, and air, right? So we can feed ourselves and we can drink and we can breathe. Toileting, going to the bathroom, being able to clean up after yourself. Any physical activity, being able to socialize. And then of course, being able to prevent injuries or not putting yourself in a dangerous situation. So when you look at this kind of situation of any of you have been CNAs and worked in long-term care, skilled nursing, anything like that, uh, people as they start to develop like dementia or Alzheimer's or their as they age, the brain doesn't process things the same way that it would before. So for example, I worked in skilled nursing and we had this patient who was convinced she could walk and she could walk safely. But the reality of the situation is that she could not and she fell regularly causing harm. So in this case, she no longer had the activity of daily living to uh, being physically active and preventing injury. Then we will look at self-care deficit. So when is nursing needed? Oren's theory states that the nursing is necessary when an adult can no longer perform the activities that promote self-care. So basically when their ADLs have gone down so far that they can no longer take care of themselves and do these things that would provide self-care. So this includes doing things for patients or supporting them and providing a safe environment. And sometimes it's just teaching. So if again, if you've worked as a CNA, you know what this is like. This is like the perfect example of, you know, this person can't do anything for themselves anymore and I need to do it for them. Or in a hospital setting, somebody's had surgery, they just had a hip replaced or a knee replaced, and they, for a short time, can't do that for them, but then eventually they're able to gain strength to be able to walk and do things alone without the help of a nurse. So then we've got the theory of the nursing system, and this is basically how can the nurse meet the needs of those patient, of that patient, and this is done through completely caring for the patient. We're gonna do everything for them or in partial care, maybe like you'd get in a hospital where you're just gonna do a little bit of care for that patient until they can take care of themselves. And then often it's education focused. We're gonna teach these patients, hey, these are the things that you need to do in order to best take care of yourself. Next up, we've got Newman's healthcare system models, and this is a comprehensive and holistic approach. So. The idea behind the system is that each individual is their own system. So each client has these 
like a concentric circle basically of these th five things that affect them. So we've got the physiological, psychological, sociocultural, spiritual, and developmental. So these are all individual systems inside a person that are affected by stressors in their environment, both internal and external, which are then going to play a role in their general, in their general system inside their body. And then inside the environment, we have intrapersonal stressors, interpersonal stressors, and extrapersonal stressors that are going to cause stress on the client's system themselves. So Newman views nursing as being concerned with all of the variables that influence a patient's response to certain stimuli and stressors. So the goal of this theory is to stabilize each client's system and to reduce those stressors. Then we've got King's theory of goal attainment. And so this is growth and development to attain life goals. This model includes three systems that interact with each other, the personal, interpersonal, and social systems. In the case of a patient nurse relationship, the patient's perception of the nurse will affect their health outcomes or the nurse's interaction and communication with the patient will have an effect on the personal system. So, and then the hospital's clin or clinic's systems of organization and authority will affect the nurse's actions and the relationships with the patient. So as a nurse and patients, so as that nurse and the patients have more transactions, then they will be able to foster growth and development through goal setting and achievement. So you can see this like idea here of the psychology of the patient versus the psychology of the nurse versus the psychology of the system that surrounds those two that those two and does have some effect on the relationship because me as a patient if I look at a nurse and I think that they are incapable of doing what I think should be done I'm not going to have a lot of trust with them and I'm not going to be willing to work with them versus if I have a nurse that's really good at communicating with me and telling me and explaining to me what's going on that is going to give me a better perception of what they're doing I can know that they know what they're doing and that's going to give me the space and the time that I need in order to develop trust with that patient and then as we we all know as we've worked in healthcare, the system that surrounds us, the hospitals and the clinics and the environment in which we work has a big impact on us as nurses and also on our patients. So this theory is stating that nursing is a process of action, reaction, and interaction by which nurse and client share information about their perceptions in a nursing situation. We've got Pender's health promotion model, and this is an individual's experience with the environment. So this theory states that an individual's experiences, previous behavior, and outcomes from that behavior will affect them participating in health promoting behavior. So for example, we've got a patient who has smoked two packs of cigarettes for 20 years and they've never had a negative experience, they've never had cancer, never any other kind of negative health outcome versus a patient who has the exact same history but just got diagnosed with throat cancer. So who do you think is most likely to quit using tobacco? Then um, if the individual perceives that there are some positive health outcomes from a behavior change. They've tried something in the past and it hasn't worked or they're unlikely to engage with it again. So if they've done something in the past and they know that it works, they're more likely to engage with it again. So we can look at this like uh, dieting and exercise, like, oh, I've decided I need to build muscle. Well, you know, what worked for me last time was aerobics or what worked for me was CrossFit or what worked for me was eating a keto style diet or a paleo diet or a low carb or uh, any vegan diet, anything like that. So if they've had experience with it in the past and they've kind of fallen off the wagon, maybe they'll get back on it. But if they've had an experience where they're like, man, you know, I ate really restrictive calories for months and I lost a little bit of weight, but it all came back on there shortly thereafter. I'm not really going to do that again. Then they're less likely to participate in that behavior because there was no long-term positive outcome. So next up, we've got the adaptation model by Roy. This is basically, we wanna promote adaptation. So this has four components to it. We have the person, health, environment, and nursing. And the person is gonna be a biopsychosocial being, so just a human, who constantly interacts with the environment and then uses innate and acquired skills and coping mechanisms to adapt to that environment around them. We've seen a lot of adaptation that's happened recently with the COVID pandemic and how people have had to adapt to the situation in order to promote wellness, both physical and mental. 
then health is represented by the health wellness continuum and is an inevitable part, inevitable part of life. So these are going to, this is just, you know, sometimes we're healthy, sometimes we're not so healthy and it kind of goes back and forth, but there's no way that we can avoid those situations where we're not going to be healthy at some point in our existence. And then the environment has three parts. Uh, the focal, which includes internal and external stressors, and then contextual, which is all of the stressors in their situation. And then residual is referring to the long lasting effects of that situation, but the outcome is not currently clear. And we're experiencing some of that residual right now of we're watching on a societal level of how this, how society and individuals have reacted in the residual outcomes of having been in pandemic mode for the last couple of years. And then of course, we've got the nursing part of that, which our goal as a nurse is then to help people come over those uh, challenges and struggles and to adapt. Say we have a patient who lost a limb and we're going to teach them how to adapt to this new style of life. Or if you have a new mom who's bringing home a new baby and she's got to learn how to adapt to those challenges and struggles like creating a new normal. That's what we want to do is help all of our patients adapt so that they can in turn have happiness in their existence. Then we've got Salmon's Construct for Public Health Nursing. So this is an organized societal effort. What we want to do here is as a society and in an organized manner, we want to prevent disease, we want to protect against disease, and we want to promote health. So there's four areas that he talks about specifically. So there are four areas that this theory talks about specifically, which are the human, environmental, and the medical technology and social areas. And the idea here is that as a society, we're going to help people change. So this is can be through education. So we can educate our patients and help them know what to do to change their behaviors. This is also going to be creating programs. So we've got the evidence-based programs that teach or create areas to reduce risk. And then we also are going to look at creating laws that promote better health outcomes. So we've got things like wearing seatbelts. There's a lot of states now that have indoor clean air acts so that people are less exposed to secondhand smoke and therefore reduce their risk. And then we've got lots of education on like billboards and advertisement on things that people can do in order to be healthy. So you can see this, uh, this is implemented regularly inside public health to promote health and protect against disease. All right, so quick review, looking at all of these theories, you can see that they have a lot of similar underlying tones, but they are slightly differing in their approaches. So each one can be used in different settings to best achieve positive health and outcomes for your patient. These are just a few of the nursing theories. I've linked a link below that you can check out. There's a lot more nursing theories out there, but these are the most common ones that I've seen. So just remember that a theory is a supposition or a system of ideas that's intended to explain something. It's, they're not perfect and it all comes from a different angle. But in general, as a nurse, we want to prevent health, treat for disorders, we wanna rehab patients as much, much as possible. And then of course, we wanna make sure that we're evaluating and researching these programs and these theories to make sure that they work. And then of course, our stakeholders are really important because those are the ones that are going to have a lot of pull in whether or not something's able to go through. And those are the people that are gonna have an interest in the outcome of whatever it is that you're trying to do. Thanks for tuning in. Please help me grow my channel by clicking subscribe and follow below. 